Hello, um, thank you for joining us. Today we're gonna to talk about uh, where UDL checkpoints and marketing professional development opportunities meet. Uh, we wanted to preface this presentation just by saying there was a, a small glitch while giving our presentation at the actual Digicon, so this is a re-recording of our presentation. Um, so all of these uh, ways of actively participating within our um, presentation won't be available in this recording. Um, okay, so I wanted to give you a really brief context of who we are. Uh, there are six of us who represent a faculty and administrator learning community on campus. Uh, we, we sort of came together because we we're all interested in um, using UDL principles to engage with faculty, uh, particularly in professional development. Um, so we represent a fairly diverse team, uh, including Michelle Ostro, who's here with me, um, myself, Brandon Capitelli, uh, Adria Battaglia, Emily Shriak, Elise Naka, and Patricia Mix. Um, and we do come from a variety of different colleges um, and backgrounds on campus, but all with the same goals in mind. Uh, once again, we won't have ways to participate in this presentation, but if you would like to see all of our materials, they'll be available here at the uh, link to the Google Drive, which will include these slides uh, and any additional supplementary material that we talk about today. So to give you some background of how we came together, the six of us uh, attended a Universal Design for Learning uh, workshop, which was one of the first workshops targeted towards uh, administrators who primarily work with faculty. Um, the six of us uh, found ourselves very interested in recruiting faculty and how we could use UDL principles in our recruitment efforts. Um, so the way that we started is we kind of got together and brainstormed a bunch of areas, um, weak points in terms of our recruiting, and we all sort of identified one common area, and that's emailing. Uh, and so how can we use UDL principles to, to better re do, do recruitment better through emailing? Uh, the first table that I'm showing you here is the Universal Design for Learning guidelines that are offered by CAST. Um, please check out their website uh, for all of their resources. They're really great. Um, but this was the first um, sort of entry point that we used uh, when thinking about UDL and how we can apply it to our communications through email. So I wanted to tell you a quick story of mine uh, in using these guidelines. Um, I was uh, tasked with asking uh, about 35, 34 faculty, sorry, uh, if they would be interested in mentoring high achieving students here at uh, University of Texas at Austin. And what I did was first compose what I'm calling sort of the original email. And I brought that to my uh, learning community and we revised it applying all the principles in the table that I showed you in the previous slide. Uh, if you'd like to see the text for both of those two emails, I've provided a link in this slide. Um, you can go ahead and, and take a look at those. Uh, I've also commented up the revised version to sort of describe and explain why we made certain changes to the original email. Then what I did is I split the group of 34 faculty into two sort of randomly generated groups and I emailed the first half, the original version, and the second half, the UDL revised uh, version. And I really just wanted to see, did this make any kind of difference in terms of the response rate that I got? Um, and to my surprise, there was uh, a jump of 18% in the number of faculty who responded with a yes, they would be interested in mentoring a student. Um, although my sample size is small, so this represents uh, um, only three additional faculty who responded yes. Um, I was pretty surprised and happy with this response, uh, especially because some of our efforts do get scaled up to hundreds, if not thousands of students. So this could represent a pretty large increase uh, in faculty engagement uh, here with student mentorship. While there's a lot of changes that we made to that original email, um, I wanted to pull up two specific things that, um, I, that we're really focused on when revising that email. Uh, the first is, 
in this recruiting interest um, category where we were providing more autonomy of choice to the faculty. Um, so specifically, um, instead of just asking the faculty member to be the person who would be the mentor, uh, an example of this was we added grad students and postdocs and other, you know, maybe undergraduates in their lab as uh, potential uh, prospective mentors that might work. Uh, and there's a few other areas uh, where we offered uh, more autonomy for our faculty to, to engage in this mentorship. The second major thing that we made a lot of changes to was actually removing the word mentor altogether. Um, I believe that the word mentor may have been misleading and that our professors were sort of misguided in what it means to be a mentor. Often in the sciences, mentorship is equated with supervising research, uh, which is a high commitment for that professor to make. And so by um, removing the word mentor uh, and just replacing it with words like have a discussion or have a chat with uh, one of these students, I, I believe we were sort of lowering that barrier and that allowed more professors to sort of think to themselves that this might be a, a lower level commitment and something they'd be willing to engage with, uh, at least as a start of that mentorship. Uh, thank you, I'll pass it over to Michelle. Hi everybody, I'm Michelle Ostro and I work in the University of Texas Libraries and I'm also a part of the learning community that Brandon described. Um, so after the process that Brandon discussed, the project that um, he did with his mentor email where we took it into our learning community and applied some UDL checkpoints to it, we decided that we needed to learn a little bit more about marketing and communications because although we do have expertise in many areas across the university, none of us represented that expertise on our, in our learning community. Um, and so what we did was we invited some communication experts from campus to explain marketing principles to us and then we took a look at where they aligned with udl checkpoints and we tried using these places where marketing principles and udl checkpoints align to improve another email and this time we chose an app we chose to apply um, these aligned principles to a library outreach email so you can see the old and the new versions on um, here and i'll d dive a little bit deeper in a minute but i just want to mention that um that alignment between marketing principles and UDL checkpoints is available in the Google Drive um, folder that Brandon mentioned earlier, and it's linked from the agenda for, um, for Digicon. So as you can see here, after we did um, apply these principles to our original outreach email, our email got a lot shorter. Brandon's, on the other hand, got longer. So it's not about length. Um, and we just kind of wanted to point that out specifically. So just for some context for this outreach email, we provide services to um, something called our signature course program, which is freshman core courses at the universities that are taught by faculty from across campus. And these faculty apply to teach these freshman level classes. And so they're already really engaged in, um, in the student experience and they want to help our excellent students who are great high school students that's why they got here they want to help transform them into great college students um, so here's a close-up view of what our email ended up looking like and um, you can see that as i said it's a lot shorter and these emails are also in the google drive so what did we do um, the first thing we did was we used the marketing principle for recruiting interest, it's called make the email subject line a call to action based upon what matters to the receiver, which act nicely aligns with the UDL checkpoint, optimize relevance, value, and authenticity. So what we did was we changed our sub subject line from library services for your UGS course, which is passive, not a call to action, and also matters a lot more to us in the libraries than it does to faculty. And we changed it to um, prepare your UGS students to do college level research. And because we know these faculty apply to teach these classes because they want to prepare their students to do well in college, that that resonated with their values. Um, 
We also use the marketing principle, personalized emails whenever possible, and the UDL checkpoint, um, that same UDL checkpoint around recruiting interest. And we addressed each email to a specific faculty member, so it wasn't like a blast to everybody. It was individually from somebody, a librarian, to a specific faculty member. And then we used the marketing principle. In the body of the email, you use click-throughs for more information. And the UDL checkpoint optimized individual choice and autonomy. So we took a lot of the information that we had packed into the original email, and we moved it off into a web page and people could click through. And that basically gave faculty um, the opportunity to explore additional information when they were ready to and only explore what they were interested in. Um, we also used the marketing principle, um, no acronyms and unknown terms, which seems like a no brainer, but I think libraries might be the, um, royalty of acronyms, using acronyms. Um, that aligns with the UDL checkpoint, embed support for vocabulary and symbols within the text. Um, and let's see, so we removed all of the acronyms and library jargon from our email. We also use the marketing principle, use mobile responsive design, since many people view on a phone, especially their email which aligns with the UDL checkpoint perception, offer ways of customizing the display of information. And we shortened the email in this case um, and made it as cleanly designed as possible because we knew that a lot of faculty are on the go and they're gonna just be checking their email on the phone whenever they can and not necessarily on a computer screen. And so um, we didn't like Brandon um, have a before and after to measure because we only send these things out once a semester. Um, and, but, we're hoping that next semester we will actually see an increase. Um, as Brandon said, we can't actually do this since we're not recording this live, but we hope that this is useful to you and that the materials in the Google Drive folder that are shared through the agenda will be something that you can apply to your own outreach for workshops for faculty development, for um, services, or just really any time that you are trying to communicate with other people and want to get the message. Thank you. Thank you.